Hi, my name is Melinda and I create Realborns for Bountiful Baby. The first step when scanning a Realborn is creating a setting that is most comfortable for the baby and the mother. Making the room nice and warm, putting down a soft blanket, and dimming the lights on one side of our studio. The mother will settle her baby on our soft turntable bed until they fall asleep. Once the baby is asleep or extremely calm, I will turn on scanning equipment and begin to scan. Scanning technology is very advanced, but for our particular models, we are only able to take one scan at a time. On average, it takes 150 to 200 individual scans to create parts for the 360 degree detail that is necessary for our robots. This will take anywhere from one hour to multiple scanning sessions, two to three hours, multiple times a day. It will depend on how well the baby is able to sleep and how the mother is feeling. If a mother needs something during a scanning session, we will keep her as comfortable and relaxed as possible while she is in the studio with us. Once all the scans have been taken, Jessica will take photos that will later be used for advertising certificates and any other use to showcase the model and promote the kit. So after we are done with scanning and Jessica has taken photos of our model, then we will do what's called castings and we will mold about mid arm and calf on the baby, then we'll mold it and fill a casting. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a white ceramic recreation of the baby's hand. And then later, then once those parts are hardened and cured, then we'll pull them out of the molds and then we'll scan those. And that helps a lot with aligning different scans on the hands and feet for the baby. Next, I will sort scans, which is basically deleting parts of scans that didn't turn out or scans that just didn't work all together and anything that's not usable and then I'll take and I'll separate the different scans that we took of the head and then of the left arm and the right arm and the left leg and the right leg and they'll be put in their own separate folders that'll make it easier when it comes time to putting the scans together. From there then I export everything from the scanning software that we use and I back up all of our original scans and our exported scans onto a hard drive where we save everything. From there, then each scan has to be aligned manually and then like a virtual sewing together. So for instance, if you have a scan of your palm, then you, and you also have a scan of the side of your hand, then you have to take the scan for the side of your hand and you have to turn it and align it so that it lines up where there's overlapping detail and you basically have to do that with every single scan all the way around your hand, your arm, your leg, and the head. This is one of the most time-consuming parts of creating the Realborns. It can sometimes take weeks uh, or even months to get all the different scans. When it's ready for editing, then I'll open up different files and I'll start working on them one at a time. That's where I use photos that Jessica takes that show all the different detail on the baby's hands and on their fingernails and on their toes and the bottom of their feet um, as my reference for what I've gotten from the scans that were put together. And usually there's a lot of seams going down very detailed areas and those have to be um, not erased but they have to be cleaned up. And, and then at, at this point then that's where we are perfecting detail and we have to keep in mind what is moldable and how much detail we're going to lose in the process of our vinyls being made. So at this point then that's where I have to keep in mind how much detail is going to be lost when the when the part is being molded for vinyl because there is a lot of detail and there's even some size there's even shrinkage that goes along with that and so we try to compensate for that as much as we possibly can so that the end product that you guys receive and the vinyl kits that we sell on our website are as close to what the detail on the real baby was. During the molding process, you lose depth in your lines and in your detail. So I try to compensate for that when I'm working on the real borns in, this, in the editing stage. Deepening everything because we are going to lose some of that and I want the vinyl parts for reborning to be as close to what the detail was on the real baby. So there's other things that aren't moldable. For instance, uh, extreme bends or really close together fingers that aren't quite touching or um, 
fingers curved down but not all the way touching the palm or anything or if you have a sharp bend in the elbow and in the wrist and in the fingers then that's not moldable so we can't do things like that and still have the kind of detail that we do so all that has to be all that has to be kept in mind during the editing process we have to think is this something that can be molded or do we need to change it or do we need to reposition it is, is this something that's going to make us lose more detail or that's gonna web something together or that's going to have to be fixed in the factory because it's not going to withstand and, or, and the part will break or it'll get a lot of bubbles or cracks in the vinyl. There's also a lot of parts during scanning that our scanner cannot scan. For instance, anything that would be considered a crevice or kind of like a cave in, which would be inside your nose or if a baby has very thick eyelashes, then it won't scan your main eye line, whether the baby's eyes are open or closed, then, um, or inside the ears, or if their mouth is open, then inside the mouth, and then anything that's wet too. So if uh, we're scanning a baby and they are still enough while they're awake and they open their eyes, the scanner will scan everything around the eyeball, but it won't scan tear duct or anything that's wet. Um, and the same goes for lips. If a baby has a binky in their mouth before we scan their face and they lick their lips, then it won't scan anything that's wet. So there is a lot of detail that has to be made up for in the editing process. For areas of baby that have more detail, such as the face and the hands and the feet, then we will focus on those areas and work on the detail until we feel like it looks really, really good. And then we'll do what we call test prints, where we'll virtually cut the part at the wrist or the ankle or just around the face and we'll print that part so that we can double check the detail and we can look at it in real time because there are things that look good virtually when you're working on it on the computer versus when you actually have the part in front of you and you're looking at it and you'll see things here and there like oh that's not quite the shape that I thought it was or that detail isn't as deep as it needs to be or that's too deep and it needs to be brought back a little bit. Um, so we'll use the test prints and then we'll make all those different changes and then the next step would be to work on the upper arms and make sure that the angle looks good when it's going to be attached to a body. Um, and same, with th same thing with the legs, we want them to curl up like a newborn. And with the angle of the head, we don't want it leaning back or too far or down like that. We want it just at that right angle so that when it attaches to our bountiful baby bodies, then it looks the best that it can or it positions as close to a real baby as we can get it. After the test prints, we'll do what you call full prints. And that's typically the part that we send to our factory to be molded. But we'll always do a double check before anything gets sent out. We'll compare it to different photos of the face and the hands and close up of the toes and just make sure that everything looks good. And then we'll also check the scaling to make sure that the arms don't look like they're too big for the head and the legs, make sure legs don't look too big. Because every now and then something might get tweaked and that's the stage where we would see in the final product if there's something off in that way. So we always like to double check that before sending anything out. And then if anything needs to be reprinted or fixed or an angle needs to be changed so that it's moldable or so that it looks better on the baby, then we'll do that at that stage. One thing to remember is the process to complete a reborn varies for every single baby. Not every baby gets really good scans and not every baby is done scanning in an hour. Depending on how hard it is to align those different scans, then that adds on to how much effort and work has to go into create that.